Well, political confusion continues to shape up in Maharashtra as we approach the first phase of voting. I'm Priya Kothari and with me is Ananya Datta. Hi Ananya. Hi Priya. You know, there have been several big themes that have been playing out during the week and one very big theme has been of the MVA which has announced its seat sharing in Maharashtra. Now that's of uh, you know, critical importance because uh, you know, we actually know who will be fighting for which seat. So now the uh, Uddhav Thakri led Shiv Sena will be contesting for about 21 seats. This is followed by the Congress that will be contesting for about 17 seats and the Sharad Pawar led NCP will be contesting for about 10 seats. That's right Priya and the other big story this week is around the women candidates. So whether we have Supriya Sule who will be taking over, uh, taking on her sister-in-law Sunetra Pawar in Baramati or we have somebody like uh, Navneet Rana. Her caste certificate has recently been okayed by the SC so she will be contesting. And we have somebody like, at the same time we have somebody like Ramtek's uh, Rashmi Barve, whose caste certificate has not been okayed, so she will not be contesting. So our colleague Swati has been following these developments. So Swati, tell us a bit more about how Maharashtra has been represented in the parliament and what we can expect this time. Yes, Ananya. Maharashtra has a rich legacy of some really formidable women represented in the parliament. In fact, in the first election itself in 1951-52, we had two women from Maharashtra elected to the parliament. One was from Pune, Indira Maidev, and the other, Anusaya Bai Kare, from Nagpur. Over the years, we have had social activist Rinal Gore, who is from Mumbai and was known as Paniwali Bai, elected to the parliament, and also Pratibhatai Patel from Jalgaon, who never lost an election. In fact, Pratibhatai Patil was later elected unopposed as the first woman president of our country. But you know, Ananya, despite these formidable women being elected to the parliament, the overall number in the, over the years has not really gone up much. The best representation so far was in the last election in 2019, when there were eight women elected to the parliament. This time around, two. We have 15 women candidates in the fray for the 48 seats in Maharashtra. But the problem for these women sometimes is that they get tagged as a family legacy. It's true for Supriya Sule being called Sharad Pawar's daughter or Pankaja Munde known as late Gopinath Munde's daughter. And you know Ananya, uh, these women wear their family name with pride and have proven themselves in Maharashtra's political arena. Supriya Sule, for instance, has been elected thrice to the parliament and Pankaja Munde was a cabinet minister in Maharashtra. Now, on June 4th, we will know how much woman power Maharashtra sends to the parliament. Well, thanks for that, Swati. Uh, you know, talking about political families, Ananya, there's always a lot brewing in Maharashtra when it comes to uh, family politics. And uh, we've seen the Pavar versus Pavar and the Thakre versus Thakre play out. Uh, and it's really interesting to see how it's going to shape up in these elections as well, considering the fact that we have, uh, you know, Supriya Sule taking on, uh, you know, Sunetra Pawar, who's a sister-in-law in Baramati, and uh, several other uh, dynamics shaping up across constituencies. So, uh, Swati Kher has been tracking the kind of uh, political scenario shaping up between the families and how these ties and relationships will uh, pan out uh, going forward in the election. Swati, take it away. Of course, in Maharashtra, Pawars and Thakres are the two big political families. The Pawars, after the NCP split last year, are split vertically with Sharad Pawar and his daughter Supriya Sule on one side. And Sharad Pawar's nephew Ajit Pawar and his wife Sunetra Pawar on the other side. Both of them trying to win the family bastion of Baramati this year. Then the Thakres. The Thakres, Uddhav Thakre has got the lion's share, or rather I should say the tiger's share in the MVA because he's got the highest number of seats to contest, that is 21. His cousin, Maharashtra Navnirman Sena Chief Raj Thakre, has recently said that he's going to back the BJP-led alliance to ensure a victory for PM Modi. Like the Thakres, we have other two families which are also having cousins at different ends. For example, in Satara, the royal family members, Udayan Rajay Bosle, is vying for a ticket from the BJP, but it is his cousin, Shivendra Rajay, who's turned out to be his biggest opponent. As a result, the BJP has not been able to declare a candidate for the seat uh, so far, though the nominations have already begun. 
In Bid, the Munde cousins seem to have patched up after Pankaja Munde was given the nomination from the BJP and her cousin Dhananjay Munde vouched that he would ensure a thumping majority for his cousin Pankaja. Thanks for that, Swati. And with the election campaign really picking up, uh, Priya, a lot of action is expected the next week. The Prime Minister has already started campaigning in Maharashtra. And it will be interesting seeing how the candidates, they're going to woo the new voters and also reconnect with the older voters. So a lot of action expected in the coming week. So for more details, pick up a copy of Times of India or log on to the Times of India website. Thanks and goodbye.